The Holy Gospel of our Lord according to St. John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Chapter 20 On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene cometh early, when it was yet dark under the sepulchre, and she saw that the stone taken away from the sepulchre. She ran therefore and cometh to Simon Peter and to the disciple whom Jesus loved, and saith to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went out and that other disciple, and they came to the sepulchre. And they both ran together, and that other disciple did outrun Peter, and came first to the sepulchre. And when he stooped down, he saw the linen cloths lying, and yet he went not in. Then cometh Simon Peter, following him, and went into the sepulchre, and saw the linen cloths lying, and the napkin that had been about his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but apart, wrapped up into one place. Then that other disciple also went in, who came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. The disciples therefore departed again to their home. But Mary stood at the sepulchre without, weeping. Now as she was weeping, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre. And she saw two angels in white, sitting one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had been laid. They say to her, Woman, why weepest thou? She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. When she had said thus, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and she knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, thinking it was the gardener, said to him, Sir, if thou hast taken him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turning said to him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus said to her, Do not touch me, for I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I ascend to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene cometh and telleth the disciples, I have seen the Lord. In these things he said to me. Now when it was late, that same day, the first of the week, and the doors were shut, where the disciples were gathered together, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst, and said to them, Peace be to you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples therefore were glad when they saw the Lord. He said therefore to them again, Peace be to you. As the Father hath sent me, I also send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them, and he said to them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost, whose sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven them, and whose sins you shall retain, they are retained. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, who is called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of his nails, and put my finger into the place of the nails, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Jesus cometh, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be to you. Then he said to Thomas, Put in thy finger hither, and see my hands, and bring hither thy hand, and put it into my side. 
be not faithless, but believing. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Because thou hast seen me, Thomas, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and have believed. Many other signs also did Jesus in the sight of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. Thus far are the words of the Holy Gospel. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Other than chapter 1, this might be my favorite chapter in the whole of John's Gospel, which is my favorite Gospel, the Gospel of St. John. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came early to the sepulcher, and she ran, and she told Simon and the other disciple whom Jesus loved, that's St. John, the apostle, they have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher. So both the apostles run to the sepulcher, and John outruns Peter. Why? John's younger than Peter. John was the youngest of the 12 apostles, so he gets there faster. Peter gets there later, but John does not dare enter the sepulcher. He shows deference to Peter, who is to be the Pope. Now, Vatican I teaches that Peter was not yet Pope. If you look at Matthew 16, Christ uses the future tense, that he will give him the keys. That doesn't actually happen until John chapter 21. But yet, he is the leader, he is the chief of the apostles. And so when John gets there, he doesn't go in, he waits for Peter. Then Peter comes, they go into the sepulcher, and they see the linen cloths, and they see the head napkin, the napkin that had been wrapped around the head. And they, just, they depart and they go to their home. Now Mary stood outside the sepulcher. And when she stoops down to look within, she sees two angels. Now, it's not recounted that Peter and John saw this, but she sees two angels, one at the head, one at the foot. Every single Jew knew what this meant. This is the propitiatory. The Holy of Holies, or the Ark of the Covenant was, there was the Ark of the Covenant, which is a box, gold, containing the Ten Commandments the Word of God. And on each side of the Ark of the Covenant were two angels, statues of angels. Uh, for, for Jews and for Protestants who say, statues are idols, you shouldn't have statues in your church. There were two statues in the Holy of Holies in the Jewish temple that God commanded Moses to be made. In the holiest place of all of Israel, there were two statues. So God's obviously not opposed to statues in the sanctuary. So Mary sees two real angels at the foot and at the head of the slab where Jesus was. This is the new Holy of Holies. And they say, woman, why weepest thou? Uh, sorry. Yeah, they say, woman, why weepest thou? She saith, because they have taken away my Lord, I know that where they have laid, laid him. And she turned back and she saw Jesus, but she didn't know it was Jesus. She thought it was the gardener. Now this is an important mystery because Adam, the first man, was the gardener of the Garden of Eden. Christ was buried in a garden. So she thinks, the mystery here is she thinks he's just the gardener. It's just a son of Adam. It's just Adam. But in reality, it's the second Adam. It's the son of Adam, the son of man. She says to him, Sir, if thou has taken him from hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turning said to him, Rabboni, which is master. That is the moment of epiphany. All Jesus has to say is her name, Mary. And as soon as Jesus says Mary, she knows this is him. This is Jesus. It's not the gardener. It's not the old Adam. It's Jesus. It's the new Adam. 
Last year, the new St. Thomas Institute, we, we had a pilgrimage. It was a beautiful pilgrimage. We went to the Holy Land. Father Hallwell, who's a great priest, love him to death. Please pray for him. He's, he's really struggling with cancer and going through brain surgeries and chemo and all kinds of things. He's offered all of his, his sufferings up as a penance for those who have suffered um, through abuse in the Catholic Church. He's a very holy priest. We had Mass at the Holy Sepulchre, and then later we had Mass at the altar of Mary Magdalene. There's an altar there. On the altar it says, do not touch me in Latin. Touch me not. Noli tangere. Do not touch me. And on the floor are two circles in the marble. One of those circles is where Mary stood, and the other circle is where Jesus stood. And these two circles on the floor mark where Mary was standing and when Jesus, where Jesus was standing as she came away from the tomb. And she said, Sir, where have they taken the body of him? And he said, Mary. And she said, Rabboni. So it was, I mean, it was awesome to have the Holy Sacrifice in the Mass. We have the Latin Mass, Father Hallwell, and where we are during the Mass are on these circles on the floor where Jesus and Mary Magdalene stood for this interchange. Also, he says, do not touch me. I think this is important when we, when we think about communion in the hand, communion on the tongue. Christ is so holy that he even told the holiest woman besides Mary, the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mary Magdalene, don't touch me. Don't touch me. There's something very sacred about Christ. And um, the second part of the chapter is Christ later in the day. This is Sunday, the first Sunday, Easter Sunday. He appears to them. He says, peace be with you. As the Father sent me, Jesus, so I send you. And then he breathed on them. <sighs> he literally breathed. Now, Judas is dead. Thomas, the apostles, missing. So there's only 10 of them there. He breathes on them, and he says, Receive ye the Holy Ghost, whose sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven, whose sins you shall retain, they are retained. When I was a Protestant, this verse bothered me. Why? Because this is the sacrament of confession. He says, as the Father sent me, God the Son, so I send you, the apostles, into the world. Receive the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins you forgive are forgiven. Whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. Now, I asked Protestant seminary professors, what does this mean? And they said, oh, it means preach the gospel. It means the apostles should go preach the gospel. That Okay, that's true. So when you preach the gospel, people's sins are forgiven. True. But it says, whose sins you retain, they are retained. So the apostles had the power from Christ receiving the Holy Ghost to not only forgive people, to absolve them, but to retain their sins. This does not fit with Protestantism. Here, there's a Trinitarian pattern. pattern. As the Father sent the Son, so the Son gives the Holy Ghost by breathing it on the ten apostles, and then he says, whosoever sins you forgive are forgiven, and those you retain, they are retained. So when you hear a Protestant say, well, I just confess directly to God and, and my sins are forgiven. Well, how come Christ sent the Holy Ghost on the ten apostles here and gave them authority and power to forgive and retain? Forgive and retain. Now, Thomas, the apostle, wasn't there. And Thomas says, look, unless I put my hands in his side, I don't believe this. Thomas is completely unbelieving. So it says eight days later, which would also be a Sunday. It's the octave of Easter. This is why on low Sunday or the Sunday after Easter, we read about Thomas in his unbelief. The doors being shut. Both times the doors are locked and Christ in his resurrected body appears amongst the apostles. Again, he says, peace be to you. And then he says to Thomas, put your fingers in your hands. Put them in my side. Put them in, into my hand wounds. Be not unbelieving, but believing. And then Thomas says, 
my Lord and my God. Deus meus, Dominus meus et Deus meus, Dominus meus et Deus meus. At the consecration at the Latin Mass, when the priest holds up the body of Christ, we are instructed to say, Dominus meus et Deus meus, my Lord and my God. Pope Pius X gave an indulgence of, I believe it was seven years and seven quarantines for anyone, that is seven years and seven lengths, seven forty days, for whoever says, my Lord and my God. I'm looking for a missile and I don't have one. Oh, here's one. But I'm pretty sure it's seven years and seven quarantines for at the consecration to say, Dominus meus et Deus meus, my Lord and my God. Because thou hast seen me, Thomas, thou hast believed. Blessed are all they that have not seen and have believed. That's you and me. We haven't seen Jesus in the flesh. We trust that the apostles were telling us the truth. And so we believe. And Jesus gives us a special blessing here. Blessed are they that have not seen and have believed. That's a blessing from the second person of the Trinity. And then finally, verse 31, But these things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. You must believe, and you must have everyone in your family and all of your friends believe in Jesus Christ. That is the entire goal of our lives here on earth, to believe in Christ, to hope in Christ, to love Christ, and to get as many people possible to believe in Jesus Christ. In John 14, 6, we already saw it. I am the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus says. No one comes to the Father except through me. No one. No one. Not a president, not a king, not a, a Muslim, not a Hindu, not an atheist, not a Jew, not a Sikh, not an indigenous, nothing. No one comes to the Father except through Jesus, period. No one comes to the Father except through me. We must do everything we can this Christmas to extend belief in Jesus. Put up your nativity scenes. Get on social media. Call your friends, write your friends, invite them to Mass. Tell them about Jesus. Jesus is the answer to every single problem you have. Divorce. Problematic children. Businesses being crushed. Bankruptcy. Broken friendships. Family strife. Disease. Death. You name it. Jesus is the answer. He comes in the midst of them. The doors are locked. They are afraid. The apostles are afraid. The doors are locked. Jesus appears in the midst of them and says, Peace be to you. In the traditional Latin Mass, the priest takes a tiny particle off the hosts. And three times, this is not in the Novus Ordo. They got rid of it in the Novus Ordo. If you go to the Novus Ordo, you won't see it. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Three times he makes the sign of the cross for the three days Christ was in the tomb. And he drops the body into the blood. Traditional Latin Mass. Make sure you go to the traditional Latin Mass. That was removed in the Novus Ordo. Anabal Bunini took it out. It's gone. Not there. You're only going to experience it in the traditional Latin Mass. I did a whole lesson on this in the New St. Thomas Institute. And a lot of people wrote me and said, Hey, I, I watched your video on all the mystical things in the in the Mass. And when I went to Mass, I didn't see it. You got it wrong. I said, no, you were going to the Novus Ordo. When you go to the Novus Ordo, a lot of these things are lost. If you go to the traditional Latin Mass, you get them. You get them. All right. Well, we got one more chapter to go. John 21. Today was John 20. So um, that'll be done tomorrow, which is Christmas Eve, special day. Traditionally, Christmas Eve is a day of abstinence. Before Vatican II, all Catholics on Christmas Eve did not eat meat. Did you know that? That is the tradition. So um, find a traditional Latin Mass for Christmas. Experience it, especially Midnight Mass if you can. And make sure you pray the rosary every single day and read the Bible 
every single day and pray every single day. I think 2021 is going to be difficult. That's my sense. I don't know that. I'm not a prophet. I think 2021 is going to be difficult. All right. Let us close with an Ave Maria. No many. Oh, that's the wrong thing. That's a Trump thing. Latin. No many patris et fidi et spiritus sancti. Amen. Pater noster, qui es in celi, sanctificetur nomen tuum, advenia regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in cello et in terra, panum nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, et emite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, se libera nos amalo. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in morieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, or per nobis peccatoribus, nunc et et mortis nostre. Amen. Gloria Patri, et Filio, et Spiritui Sancto, sicuterat in principio, et nunc et semper, in secula seculorum. Amen. Nomini Patris, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. All right, we all have a, a happy Christmas Eve. I just looked over in the comments. People are thinking, what? No, no meat on Christmas Eve. Yes, that's the tradition. Tradition is no meat on Christmas Eve. Don't do it. You don't do it. It's, it's a day of penance. Christmas Eve is a day of penance. And then beginning midnight, midnight mass after midnight mass, party, pop the champagne, sizzle a steak, roast the turkey. It's time to party because... Christ, our Savior, is born. And the day before is a day of penance. It's very traditional in uh, Catholic countries to have fish, some kind of a fish meal on, on uh, Christmas Eve. All right, remember our Lord Jesus Christ says, you are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. God bless, Godspeed. We'll see you on Christmas Eve for the final chapter of St. John's Gospel.